As I say in probably every video I make, we live in the golden age of craft beer here in the US. Now that we have over 7,000 active breweries here in the United States, we have more variety and experimentation going on than ever before. Today, that experimentation to create things like Brute IPAs seems to be rooted in a drive to find great new flavors and differentiating your brews in a crowded beer marketplace. But beer innovations of a couple hundred years ago were much more practical. It was things like making beer able to withstand long seed journeys or putting it into a cask in such a way that prevents infection that brewers were concerned with way back then. But one motive that provides endless fascination to this beer nerd is that many great beer innovations were just trying to make their beer more nutritious as well as delicious. Hey, this is Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and here in the modern era, we recognize beer as a vice meant to be enjoyed in moderation, but that wasn't always the case throughout human history. Back before things like refrigeration and water treatment systems, beer was seen as a pretty safe source of calories and water thanks to its slight alcohol contact and antiseptic hops. So I guess it's no surprise that many great beer innovators were trying to make this safe source of water as nutritious as possible. So when Sain asked me to take a look at the history of lactose beers and milk stouts, it was really cool for me to explore this era of beer innovation. So let's dive into who exactly was fiddling around trying to make a healthier stout, and why on earth they decided to mix beer and milk together this week on Beer by the Numbers. If you're excited for another great beer history video, so if you've ever seen my extremely popular video on the history of the stout, you already know that porters and stouts share basically the same history and exist on a kind of spectrum with only minor differences between them justifying two different style designations. Crazy beer nerds like me enjoy the endless debate of what counts as a porter and what counts as a stout. But once we add milk or lactose sugar to the equation, all debate shuts down into a clear picture of what the beer is supposed to be. Stouts are descendants of porter, and these beers burst onto London's beer scene in the early 1700s as brewers were trying to differentiate themselves from all the sweet brown ales and fancy new pale ales that were all the rage at the time. The style was named after its loyal blue-collar customers, the street and river porters of Britain's busy mercantile age. Porter gave itself a full dose of bitter English hops to get away from the lightly hopped sweet brown ales, and was made from a much cheaper and rougher dark malt as opposed to the expensive and delicately roasted pale malts that were new at the time. It was these unique flavors and approachable price points that allowed porters and their close cousin stouts to come to dominate the beer industry in Britain and their sprawling empire over the next hundred years. But like every popular beer style, it wasn't too long before new challengers emerged to try and take that top spot. Mild ales, bitters, and IPAs were all taking some of Porter's big market share. So if you were a great Porter brewer, how would you innovate on this really simple style of beer to get people excited about it again? Well, porters and stouts weren't just popular with London's working men in pubs after a long day on the job. Their wives and mothers also enjoyed having the cheap brews every now and again. And whether it was to cut through some of the bitterness or make beer drinking just a little bit healthier, it was a fairly common practice for women and even kids to mix porter with a little bit of milk for a delicious and relatively nutritious treat. And some pubs would even mix you up a milk beer on request if you wanted something with a little more substance after work. So just like a 19th century Doritos Locos taco, brewers began to experiment with integrating these two common buddies and put milk in the fermentation process of their stouts in the mid 1800s. The most notable of these experiments was done by John Henry Johnson of Lincoln's Inn's Field, who patented a nutritious version of the milk beer mixture in 1875. He envisioned a product that was brewed using barley, hops, lactose, which is a byproduct of cheese making, and whey to make some sort of fermented milk beer hybrid. Johnson never really could figure out how to get all the milk fats to properly integrate into beer. So, after failing to realize his dream, the idea was taken up by two enterprising brothers. 
In 1907, the brother owners of Mackeson of Hythe in Kent brewed a stout with just lactose this time and released it in 1909 to celebrate the 240th anniversary of brewing in their Hythe plant. Little did they know that this 240th anniversary stout would probably become the most important brewing accomplishment of Hythe and Greater Kent. In their initial marketing, they claimed that each pint contains the energizing carbohydrates of 10 ounces of dairy milk. And this creamy and sweet stout was an instant hit with the drinking public. Almost immediately, the beer had several imitators, and after a few patent disputes, the Mackeson Company decided it would be easier to license the recipe to other brewers than battle every single copycat in court. This licensing strategy actually proved quite lucrative for them and allowed the new style of beer to spread incredibly quickly across the British Isles and over into North America. The original Mackeson's Milk Stout had a gravity of about 1.054, which is roughly the same as Milk Stouts brewed in North America today. Taking a look at the 2015 BJCP style guidelines, Milk Stouts are referred to a little more broadly as Sweet Stouts, but they are beers that are very dark, sweet, full-bodied, and slightly roasty that can suggest a coffee and cream or sweetened espresso. Sounds pretty delicious to me. Aromas should have a mild roasted grain, sometimes with coffee or chocolate notes. An impression of creamy sweetness is often present, and low to no hop aromas are there. Obviously, these beers are very dark in appearance and have a medium full to full body mouthfeel that is often described as creamy. With 4-6% ABV, these stouts are much sweeter and less bitter than any other beer that calls itself stout. But what is lactose and how does it add this excellent creamy sweet element to a beer? Well, lactose is a sugar molecule, but lactose ain't your average sucrose molecule here. It's a huge Frankenstein monster of a molecule comprised of a galactose and a glucose sewn together with an extra oxygen atom. It's such a bulky molecule that it makes up 2 to 8% of milk by weight. Because these sugar molecules are so big, Lactose is a tough energy source to tap into for many microbes, including the gut bacteria in many humans. Lactose intolerance in humans is simply being unable to properly break down these molecules into energy, and instead they manifest themselves into those gross gases and bloating and other unpleasant symptoms. Just like the bacteria in some humans' guts, brewing yeast have a really tough time breaking down lactose sugars to convert them into alcohol and CO2. So most of the lactose added by the brewer makes it into the final beer, allowing its sweet taste to shine through and lending extra body and creaminess to the beer. In order to add even more creaminess to milk stouts, many brewers add nitrogen to the beer, which creates finer bubbles, giving the beer in the glass even more texture. So if you're in the mood for something a little sweeter and see a milk stout at your local brewery, be sure to give it a try. But if you're looking for a widely available brand to try, I highly recommend Left Hand Brewing's Milk Stout, especially their nitro version for maximum creaminess. Getting to go to Left Hand's tap room last year was quite the treat, and especially because I got to try this great stout fresh and in person. Interestingly, the quest to make beer more nutritious didn't end with the Milk Stout. Over the past year, many different brewers have been experimenting with things like electrolyte-infused beers to appeal to younger, more health-conscious consumers in today's crowded craft beer market. Often touted as a great workout recovery drink, these beers promise to help rehydrate and provide a little burst of energy along with some muscle soreness-reducing alcohol. Although time will tell if these claims resonate with consumers or have a lot of scientific validity, I think we're going to see a lot of efforts to make beer more nutritionally dense than light pilsners of decades past. So there you go, beer nerds, the innovative history of the Milk Scout and the spiritual successors that have followed it today. This is one of my favorite styles, especially when I want something a little sweeter during the winter. What's your favorite Milk Stout brand, or do you prefer a different style? Let me know down in the comments section below. And while you're down there, why not leave a like on this video to show some support for great beer history content. 
Once again, this has been Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and I'll be back next time with more creamy beer content.